My husband's sister died in a freak accident, but now my red flag husband is ridiculously accusing me of murder, and it's giving me the ick. My, 30 feet, husband, Lyle, 33 meters, had a sister, Lilith, 29 feet. We were all close and saw each other two to three times a month, along with their parents. Almost six months ago, Lilith fell down the stairs at their family home and died. It was a freak accident, there's a window on the half landing, and she hit her head on the sill. I was the last person to see her. I was there for less than 10 minutes, and she was in her pajamas making coffee. I didn't even stay for a drink, and I struggle with how such a brief and meaningless interaction could have been her last. She deserved so much more. My husband and I have only been married for a year, but we've been together for four and have known each other for 20 plus. When Lilith's parents found her, they called my husband straight away, and we rushed over. We faced the whole thing as a family. In the days after, Lyle started quizzing me. Exactly what we talked about, what she was wearing, where we were standing, etc. It progressed to saying I was providing conflicting information, on tiny details he was deliberately not understanding, and accusing me of withholding information because I couldn't tell him things like what pajamas she was wearing. This escalated quickly but lasted for less than a week, as I lost my cool and made it clear that I was done answering questions. He didn't bring it up again, and I wrote it off as a grief quirk. His behavior was generally that of a normal, grieving person. Last Friday, he outright accused me of murdering her in front of his parents. Out of the blue. We were all stunned. There was an inquest which recently concluded, and there was never any doubt the verdict would be accidental death. He said it was completely obvious, and he couldn't believe that no one else could see it. He claims I went through his phone and found his messages with Lilith, I have absolutely no idea what messages he's talking about, I have never looked at his phone, and then I went over to confront her and things got out of hand and I pushed her downstairs. By the end, he was shouting about going to the police and getting the inquest overturned and how I wasn't going to get away with it. Let me be clear, Lilith and I had a great relationship. We all did. I have no idea where this has come from, other than these messages I haven't seen, and even then, I don't think there's anything I could ever see on someone's phone that would drive me to murder. It's just ridiculous. He's been with his parents since this happened and will not talk to me at all. I've had some contact with his mom, but she's not being very communicative. The last I heard, she didn't know what messages he was referring to either. I'm still completely stunned, and I have no idea how to proceed. I made a commitment to be there for him always, and I understand that grief can manifest in strange ways, but part of me feels like my love for him died the second he called me a murderer, and I don't know how we could possibly work through this. I also really don't want to be thought of in this way, and I have no idea if he has said anything to people we know. I obviously haven't. A brain tumor or psychotic break has crossed my mind, and I suggested it to his mother, and she just said she'll talk to him. Other than the questions before, he hasn't been acting odd. Obviously, he's been grieving, but he seems sane and sensible other than this. I feel like I'm going mad. Does anyone have any advice at all? Update 1. I'm looking for some legal advice. Basically, I'm in a bizarre and complex situation with my husband. I have broken the law, in England, and I feel I have no choice but to do so again for my safety. I don't know what type of solicitor I need or what the next steps should look like. My husband says I saw his messages with his sister and confronted her and that he's going to have the coroner's decision overturned and have the police investigate. I haven't seen or heard from him since, today is day 9. After I posted for advice, it spooked me, quite reasonably I think, but also led to me committing a crime and planning another. My husband's iCloud credentials were saved on an old iPad in his office, and I downloaded his backup last night. I have read all of his messages with his sister, and there is absolutely nothing like he describes. I understand this is illegal, and I'm concerned about the possible ramifications. I'm also waiting for a call back from a locksmith to change the locks on the home we own together, which I believe is also against the law. So this leads to my actual questions. I feel justified in what I've done for my safety, but is there a degree of pragmatism under the law for these issues because of the situation, or am I shooting myself in the foot? I'm resigned to the fact my relationship is over, but his parents don't seem to be taking this seriously, and they're icing me out. I believe this is a serious mental health issue that may put people, namely me, at risk. Can I do anything about this when all I have is the fact I'm being accused of murder? I feel he needs to be detained, and this should be investigated as a full-blown psychotic break. Sorry, this is all a bit mental. In addition, what type of solicitor do I need? My understanding is that a coroner's decision can't be appealed, is that correct? Are his accusations going to go anywhere? Can I protect myself from this or stop him from escalating to telling others? We live in our hometown, and everyone knows everyone. This could follow me forever, and it's either a lie or a delusion. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Update 2. 
Firstly, thank you to those who helped me get to my husband's iCloud backups through an old iPad. I wasn't expecting much from people online, but I got valuable practical advice, and I appreciate it. There were no crazy or even suspicious messages. I've searched for over 100 terms and scrolled back over years. I saw a side of them both I wasn't expecting, but nothing that explains the claim I murdered Lilith over their chats. Nothing to suggest he was cheating. Absolutely nothing to suggest incest. I repeat, no incest. No weird gaps where deleted conversations or a switch to another app would fit. Just siblings making plans, sending memes, and gossiping. They said unexpectedly horrible stuff about a few people, but not me. It was a sort of relief but it raised more questions than it answered. I sought legal advice. Turns out my options are divorce him or sit down. I contacted my community mental health team, who said they'd reach out, but made it clear it wasn't urgent. I then called his mom and said that if I didn't hear from him by this weekend, I would get a solicitor and ask for a mental health assessment as part of the divorce. In response, he made a ridiculous post to Facebook, which neither of us have used in years, and everything blew up. I'm going to try to keep this succinct. On Friday night, he made a long accusation on Facebook, with new information. He said he'd been planning to leave me for months with his sister's support, and I found the messages, and murdered her. The coroner has reopened the case and the police are preparing to arrest me, and he needs to make sure people know before the trial stops him from talking about it. It was well written and seemed vaguely plausible. He messaged people links so it got some attention, we live in our hometown and have a large circle of friends because we've been here all our lives. People I haven't spoken to since school were reaching out to me asking WTF was going on. It was madness. In response, I posted the export of his entire conversation history with Lilith, also to Facebook, when I finally got back in. I linked to the chat along with a post explaining my side, and noting that I had changed my ex's iCloud and Apple passwords, and that if he wanted them back, he should comment on my post and update his own, admitting that he was lying. He eventually did. When I started getting messages about his post, I panicked, and changing his password seemed important to preserve everything because he'd know I had access. When I spoke to him the next morning it's clear he's not having a mental episode at all but is claiming one because he's been caught in a big lie. As soon as he was outed, he called me, clearly drunk, begging and promising to explain everything if I deleted my post. I hung up and told him to call back the next day. He did, after many missed calls and texts, and he tried to bargain and guilt trip me with his mental health until it was clear the wrong people had seen his conversation. It's hard to describe but it seemed fake. It was too well rehearsed, and then this morning, when it was clear he was getting nowhere, he blocked me. Begging for mercy and reciting facts about mental disorders doesn't align with someone in crisis with a sincere belief that someone murdered their sibling. The question of why he did all this remains unanswered, and he will not be getting his passwords until it is. The legal advice said this stuff is technically illegal but it's beneath a court to take action, so I'm going to count on that because I felt like I had no other choice at the time, and now I don't see any other way to get answers from him. I am desperate and it's all I've got. So there we are. The relationship I have believed was my destiny since I was a teenager has boiled down to petty, convoluted, and vindictive bullcrap, played out on social media, for reasons still unknown. A huge red flag and one big ick. My hope for a brain tumor is fading and clearly tomorrow morning is going to be when I lawyer up and stop posting about this. I am mortified, I have no idea whether some people might believe him, and I still don't know why this all happened in the first place. Sorry I don't have a happier update, and thanks once again to everyone who offered advice. Update 3. Hi everyone. For the past few weeks, I've been trying to figure out why my husband suddenly accused me of murdering his sister, who died in an accident at home, six months ago. It still feels as ridiculous now as it did then. When Lilith died we found out she had about £3,000 in hidden debt. It was odd because she was pretty open about her finances, but it wasn't out of character for her to overspend so I hadn't really thought about it since. A comment on my last post prompted me to look more closely at money stuff, and a message to my husband from Lilith asking about a payment stuck out. I'd initially assumed it was about a car issue she'd had a few weeks before she died, but Lyle definitely paid at the garage when they picked it up because we talked about it after she dropped him home. It didn't occur to me when I first looked through. The messages supposedly proved I was a murderer so I had been looking for something scandalous. The message about payment was the only thing I had at that point, and I had no idea what it meant, so I took a chance. I told his mother I knew about the money, and that if he didn't get in touch with me that day, I would make sure everybody else did too. He called me straight away and asked me over to his parents' house to talk. He looked dreadful, and the first thing he asked me was whether I was happy now all of his friends hate him. I told him I don't give a damn about his relationships and that I was there for answers. It turns out my husband told the coroner's office that he was secretly helping Lilith pay some of her debt because she was embarrassed and struggling to keep up with her lifestyle. 
I assume it didn't seem suspicious because her death was clearly an accident, and that's what they were investigating. In reality, he took out loans and store cards in her name and she somehow found out a few weeks before she died. Some guy he works with had apparently done it before and arranged it all, and if Lilith hadn't found out, he claims they could have had it written off without her ever knowing. When she did find out, the guy left him high and dry, Kel surprise, and he had to pay it off. I'm inclined to believe that's the gist of what happened, but I am shocked my husband would do something this stupid. When she died so soon after, his brief and apparently genuine suspicion was that she had told me about it that day, and we argued and I'd killed her. He couldn't explain why I would kill someone because they were a victim of fraud, but according to him, he felt guilty in the immediate aftermath and his brain made it fit. I mostly believe this, but he tried launching into more weaponized therapy speak at that point, so I cut the topic off. A few months after his sister's death, Lyle received a letter from a credit company, not even the police, saying he was being investigated. Lilith didn't have much, so her debts, which were less than £10,000 even with the fraud, were mostly written off. Something obviously flagged against my husband during that process, I don't know how or why. When the letters got more threatening, he believed the investigation would reopen the inquest, and that he would be accused of fraud, perjury, and because of his previously unknown motive, possibly murder. He claims the only thing the company investigating him actually knows is that the fraud came from our address, so accusing me would make it impossible to prove because it would be a coin toss, his words, as to which one of us took out the credit in Lilith's name. That was worth our entire marriage to him, and my reputation in the community we have been part of for our entire lives. He says self-preservation kicked in and nothing else mattered when he thought about what could happen to him. When I asked him how his witness statement fits into his plan, because it proved he lied either way by acknowledging he knew about the debt and paying it, he froze for roughly a million years before saying he hadn't thought of that. Obviously, my response was to ask why, if he hadn't thought of it, he specifically said it was a lie he needed to cover earlier in the conversation. Suddenly he's sobbing and his parents are rushing in to ask me to leave. I was in tears at this point asking how the F he could do this to me over something so stupid, and how much his parents knew about this, as his mum was pushing me out of their house. All she said was that she couldn't have this conversation with me. She was crying too but wouldn't say another word. I am now 99% sure the dummy was trying to frame me. Not for her death, but for the fraud. He was going to claim that he was lying for me in the coroner's interview, right? If he wrapped it all up as quietly paying her off on my behalf then genuinely suspecting me of her murder, it would protect his reputation and point the finger at me. It just doesn't make sense any other way. Is my husband trying to frame me to weasel out of his actions, and how do I get to the bottom of this? I'm obviously open to theories because Reddit is the only reason I got this far in the first place. That being said, please don't come up with conspiracies about Lilith's death in the comments. It's upsetting. She was wearing crappy old slippers and walking upstairs with a cup of tea, and she slipped and hit her head on a windowsill. This was never a murder mystery, it was someone's life, and she died just because. Maybe a butterfly flapped its wings somewhere, I don't know, but it's hard enough to accept without having guesses shouted at me on the internet whilst my marriage falls apart.